Welcome back. We continue with Unit 2, Lesson 2, Part A. In Lesson 2, Part A, we focus on foreign intelligence services, those of the UK and the UK Intelligence Service collaboration with the USIC and the Intelligence Services of France and their collaboration with the U.S. government. The intelligence services of the U.K. have three major components. The MI5 security service, their task and responsibility is domestic missions and internal operations. However, they also give some protection overseas. The MI6 is the secret intelligence service their tasks and responsibilities are foreign missions and external operations. And the government communications headquarters, which, as we will see, is very similar to the NSA. The MI5 security service is responsible for terrorism, weapons of mass destruction, internal espionage, threats against economic security, and support of law enforcement. It has no arrest and detention powers. It protects British interests overseas and has expanded involvement into the control of narcotics, immigration, and fraud. It has the same collection capabilities as the United States. However, there is no Bill of Rights in the UK. The UK does not have absolute civil protections in specific liberties. The European Convention increased individual civil liberties in the UK. However, those, lim those liberties remain fewer than they are in the United States. The Home Secretary has authority over and responsibility for the MI5. The Home Secretary approves warrants, mail monitoring, searches of home and offices. Britain's intelligence services can exercise prior restraint of the press. There is no prior restraint in the U.S. unless it is the prior restraint exercised by publishers, editors, or owners of media. The Official Secrets Act of 1998 and the Anti-Terrorism Law of 2008 in the UK make it an offense for anyone to hold any information or anything that a court of law may determine could have helped a terrorist. Terrorist suspects can be held without charge for 20 days or longer in the UK. The Foreign Secretary has authority over and responsibility for the MI6. The MI6 is responsible for all forms of collection-related activities to monitor persons outside Britain. The duties are similar to those of the CIA. The MI6 also directs the government communications headquarters, which is similar to the NSA and is responsible for all SIGINT. The government communications headquarters, as I just said, is responsible for all SIGINT. It has facilities all over the world and works in very close collaboration with the, the NSA. The Defense Intelligence Staff controls Defenses, Geographic and Imagery Agency. It is responsible for all intelligence products related to geographic and imagery in general. How do the USIC and the British Intelligence Services work together? They share IMINT and SIGINT. The Defense Intelligence Staff has only airborne platforms. Therefore, the United States gives the DIS the satellite imagery it needs. The government communications headquarters and the NSA 
Scher Siegent. The MI5 and the MI6 have joint operations with the CIA and the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the FBI, only overseas, not within the U.S. The intelligence services of France are housed in the Ministry of Defense under the General Directorate for External Security. The DGSE has four subdirectorates. The strategic is charged with establishing intelligence requirements with policymakers and the foreign ministry. In this way, it is similar to the National Security Council. The intelligence subdirectorate is responsible for the collection, primarily through human, and the dissemination of intelligence. The technical directory is responsible for all land base and satellite SIGINT. It's very similar to the NSA. And the subdirectorate of operations is responsible for all clandestine operations. In this way, it is very similar to the CIA. The General Directorate for External Security has great latitude in clandestine operations. It is allowed to use violence in operations. The best example of this is the Battle of Algiers from 1954 to 1962. If you have not watched it, I suggest that you do. It's very informative and very, very close to reality. The DGSE is responsible for economic espionage against firms that compete against French companies and business interests within France and overseas. It also has agents in advisory roles to the governments in Western and Central Africa. The Directorate of Territorial Surveillance is charged with internal security. The DST is responsible for counterintelligence and general intelligence within France. It has some police powers. The French and the United States intelligence communities collaborate in terrorism and weapons of mass destruction, both had terrorism and weapons of mass destruction as high priorities. They have worked together in Iraq, in Afghanistan, and in Africa, and continue to work together in the Sub-Saharan Africa, Mali, Niger, and Nigeria. What did we cover in Lesson 2, Part A? We covered the foreign services of the UK and France and how they collaborate with the USAIC. We now move on to Lesson 2, Part B. Thank you for attending the lecture. I hope it was helpful. I look forward to meeting with you again on Lesson 2, Part B. Thank you.